Diwali, the festival of lights, is also sadly becoming the festival of pollution. Air pollution, to be precise. As fireworks light up the skies and the streets, a thick haze of smoke rises up into the air and ends up filling our lungs. Over the years, central and state governments have implemented several bans on bursting crackers, all with varying degrees of failure. Want to find out what happened this year? Keep watching. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Data Point. Today we're going to take a look at the impact this year's Diwali had on air quality across India. First, let's establish this. Two things can be true at the same time. One, bursting crackers causes pollution. And two, bursting crackers is a lot of fun. So how much pollution do your favorite crackers cause? Let's take a look. First up, we have the flower pot, a fan favorite, which produces a peak PM 2.5 pollution of 4,860 micrograms per cubic meter when it burns for three minutes. According to India's pollution standards, if PM 2.5 levels exceed an average of 60 in one day, it's considered harmful. The average PM 2.5 level in Chennai is around 15 on a normal day. So to put things in perspective, a resident in Chennai who usually breathes air with PM 2.5 levels of just 15 micrograms per cubic meter, far below the Indian limit of 60, is suddenly being exposed to 324 times more polluted air when he lights up a flower pot. If you're already shocked, hold on. The flower pot is at the bottom of the list. The ground spinner releases a PM 2.5 level of 9,490 micrograms per cubic meter when it burns for five minutes. Then you have the Diwali staple sparklers, which release 10,390 micrograms after two minutes. In third comes the pencil, which puts out 28,950 micrograms after three minutes of burning. And in second, we have the very popular Thousand Wala, which generates 38,540 micrograms in six minutes. And finally, in first place, we have the Snake Tablet, which releases a whopping 64,500 micrograms per cubic meter in just three minutes. The PM 2.5 level from one Snake Tablet is 4,300 times higher than the level seen in Chennai on a regular day. So clearly the fireworks are doing some damage to our lungs. But is it doing more damage than other known pollution causing events like stubble burning or just the accumulation of everyday vehicle traffic? The data says yes. According to data collected from the Central Pollution Control Board, across many major cities in India, especially in the South and the West, Diwali is the only major pollution causing event. In many cities, pollution levels recorded on many hours of Diwali day cross 999 micrograms per cubic meter. But keep in mind, that's the upper limit that the device can record. On other days, it's well below India's 60 microgram standard. First, let's recognize that a lot of state governments did put measures in place to minimize the impact of bursting crackers without having to ban them altogether. Tamil Nadu, Punjab and Karnataka had a two-hour window to burst crackers. West Bengal and Haryana only allowed green crackers, and those are crackers that are made without ash and harmful chemicals, so they cause less pollution. Other states had similar measures, and Delhi banned fireworks completely. Let's also recognize that these measures have had varied results. Personally, I saw and heard crackers being burst outside the two-hour window here in Chennai. With this in mind, let's take a look at air quality levels across major cities. We looked at PM 2.5 levels recorded by measuring stations every hour between January 1st, 2018 till October 25th, 2022. Let's start with Chennai. Each dot represents the average PM 2.5 level in an hour, with blue dots highlighting previous year's Diwali days and red dots highlighting this year's Diwali pollution levels. So compared to previous Diwalis, this year was not a good year for Chennai. 
Between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. on October 24th, PM 2.5 levels peaked at 694 in Velacheri measuring station. That's over 11 times the 24-hour limit. However, Diwali is not the only pollution-causing event in Chennai. As you can see, some grey dots, which are on non-Diwali days, were also quite high, indicating high pollution levels. But look at Bengaluru. Between 10 and 11 p.m. on October 24th, the PM 2.5 level peaked at 633 in Silk Board Measuring Station. In the last five years, no other hourly pollution level came even remotely close. The Sanat Nagar station in Hyderabad saw major spikes on Diwali Day, as they did during previous years as well, proving that Diwali pollution does in fact stand out. Amravati in Andhra Pradesh also followed a pretty similar trend. In the West, we have Mumbai, which saw relatively higher PM 2.5 levels during this Diwali compared to all other days, including past Diwalis. Still, compared to other cities, the peak level was quite low at 293 micrograms. In Ahmedabad and Jaipur too, Diwali day pollution stands out, except for 2019 in Ahmedabad and 2020 in Jaipur. While the 2020 dip in Jaipur is probably related to COVID restrictions, the 2019 dip in Ahmedabad could be tied to other restrictions that were enforced, like bans on series crackers, foreign-made crackers, and time limits to burst them. In eastern India, a mix of effective restrictions like allowing only green crackers and the effects of Cyclone Sitrang, which brought in rains and winds, managed to keep PM 2.5 levels below 50 micrograms across Kolkata. Over the entire 24 hours of Diwali, the PM 2.5 levels stayed below India's 60 microgram limit. In fact, this year, Kolkata recorded the lowest Diwali pollution in a long time. Patna also saw a drop in pollution levels this Diwali, especially compared to 2018 and 2019. Notably, Patna is one of the cities which actually sees higher PM 2.5 levels on other days of the year. Now, North India is the place we're used to or at least expect to see higher levels of pollution throughout the year. Delhi, for starters, I mean, needs no explanation, but we'll get to Delhi in a bit. Let's start with Amritsar. Amritsar has seen recurring Diwali pollution spikes far higher than the PM 2.5 levels during other times of the year. Still, this year's levels were marginally lower than what was previously recorded. Lucknow and Noida recorded the lowest Diwali day pollution levels in the last five years, with Noida recording a PM 2.5 peak of just 214 micrograms. That's one of the lowest peaks seen across the major cities that we looked at. And even though Anand Vihar in Delhi saw a significant spike, the peak pollution levels stayed below what was recorded in the past four years on Diwali Day. If you want to compare your city to others, you can take a look at our data point. The link is in the description box. Now, PM 2.5 isn't the only type of pollution that is A, dangerous, and B, spikes during Diwali. The hourly levels of chemicals and toxins like carbon monoxide, atmospheric ammonia, nitrous oxide, nitrogen dioxide, PM10, and sulfur dioxide all spiked on Diwali day this year. Let's use Velacheri station in Chennai as an example. Carbon monoxide levels went up to 1.8 milligram per cubic meter, quite high even though it isn't the highest level recorded this year. Atmospheric ammonia levels also saw a notable rise. Nitrous oxide, nitrogen dioxide, PM10, and sulfur dioxide all saw significant spikes, with most recording the highest levels of this year on Diwali day. These chemicals affect lung function, cause cardiac disease, and in severe cases, death. But this isn't to say that things aren't getting better. The improvement seen in Kolkata and even notoriously polluted places like Noida show that tighter restrictions and more environmentally conscious firework options can help bridge the gap between the fun side of Diwali, our health, and the environment.